Hey everybody, I'm Jay, and these are new reviews from Mob.org. Okay, let her roll. Today we've got a game about a super genius multimillionaire who created a super suit to fight evil. No, it's not about Batman, as Tony Stark has created his suit just for fun. So let's welcome the game Iron Man 3. The game was modeled by our old friends, Gameloft Company. Such as with several known games from these same developers, Iron Man is for free, but it has a system of donation, i.e. purchase of in-game goodies for real loot. For example, in Dungeon Hunter, you practically could not make a step without an infusion of money. On the contrary, you can easily complete Iron Man 3 almost for free. It may take more time and effort from you to complete it, but at least it is quite feasible. The first thing that draws your attention is the game's size. It takes a gigabyte, which is quite a lot for the genre and for mobile games in general. Speaking of which, we have a so-called endless runner here. As follows from the definition, it is kind of fast onward movement, and the player will have to dodge obstacles, collect some bonus goodies, basically that's all. Sonic used to do the same in his day. Though Stark could shoot enemies from the different appliances his suit abounds in. The second thing that caught my eye were the graphics. If you're looking at the screen now, you can see for yourself that the graphics are superb here. It's so good that it even justifies the gigantic size of the application. Beauty requires sacrifice after all. There surely are the games with even cooler graphics than this game has but almost all of them are intended for the PC. I clearly understand that spoilers are bad. I also understand what awaits for those kind of people in hell. So we'll talk about the plot in general terms only. We have three game zones, Malibu, New York, and China. It's understood that there are bosses you'll have to fight with. On the whole, the game is based on events that took place in the film of the same name, at least something resembling them. Well, you know, terrorists and all that kind of stuff. Fairly speaking, I'm getting tired with the hysteria about terrorism. I don't know about you, but I hate constantly being poked with something in my face, and even when it's only once in a while. These very terrorists are in every movie now. The olden days when the superheroes used to fight with supervillains, evil monsters, and other really interesting crowds seem to have gone. Nowadays, any lad wearing a suit of a superhero must have to do with terrorists, but I seem to be distracted. It's high time to talk about the things that make the game really interesting and absorbing. Good graphics, and even the plot, have nothing in common with it. In general, it would be naive of you to wait for a game of this genre to absorb you with its atmosphere and the twists of the plot. It is a runner, after all, but not an RPG. Graphics is a thing of an admired and forgotten sort, or at least for me. What makes the Iron Man game interesting and playable? This is the gameplay or the game mechanics, if it could be called so. By the way, till I'm going all out here, you had an opportunity to see enough of the game to get an idea about the dynamics of what was happening, even if you didn't play it yourself. And the dynamics is quite absorbing. Moreover, something new is added to gameplay during the game. Some changes happen, and some new features appear. It doesn't allow the game to come down to a dull monotony. In other words, if you run the game from the beginning, in the middle of it, or from the end, you will get three different games. All the levels are dynamically generated just while you are flying over them. You can neither remember a turn nor an advance where another enemy thing will fly to you from. And it doesn't let you get automatized after all. Every time is your first time, so to say. And about the suits, of course. Without his suit, Tony would just be an ordinary genius with gobs of money and the number one weapon manufacturer in the world. Nothing extraordinary. Each of us knows this kind of dude. And the suit is the very point. And the game abounds in suits. You can unlock them for in-game cash, and the more agile you'll be. And the faster you'll have enough money for new outfits. A couple of words about control. You can adjust the maneuvering to the touch screen, but it's much more interesting to steer by the accelerometer. And when you see an enemy, you'll have to rub your finger against the screen to direct the beam of death to the right side. Fairly speaking, it was not convenient at first. As soon as I relaxed and peacefully swung the device in my hands, somebody appeared and I had to get my finger, but I quickly found the correct finger and got used to it. To sum up all my ramblings, you can decide that the game is definitely good. And for you not to be too glad, I'll add a fly to the ointment. Let's look through minuses. First, the optimization for Android is very bad. It runs well on iOS, but the green robot creaks and lags. It's understood that the thing is not in hardware, as I was told by one Apple lover. The case is just in a lousy code optimization. Second, the images differ from the original sometimes, not to speak of voices. And for the greedy people, the above-mentioned size of one gigabyte will become the third minus. That's all for today. If you like this review, put like, sign in for the channel, and join the group. This was Jay. See you!